Hello everybody. In this video I'm going to show you how to UV unwrap and texture this 3D model of a vending machine using Blender and Substance Painter. So after adding the checker texture and setting the vector to UV, I like to select different parts of the mesh with L and press Shift H to hide everything except for the selection. Now jumping into edge mode, I will be selecting 90 degree corners that my object has. And when I have selected them, I will be pressing U and then mark seam. After that, I select the whole mesh with A, press U and unwrap. And then you want to scale the UV islands a bit around and see if you can find any stretching going on in the mesh. So right now, if we scale it up, you can see that there's some stretching up here in the middle of the mesh. So it is not quite perfect yet, so I'm going to select this 90 degree edge as well and remove some of the seams by pressing U and clear seam and unwrap it again. Looking back on this, I could have removed the seam on the bottom left as well, but live and learn. Next up, for the legs of the machine, I'm just going to be selecting the edges on the side, arc seam and unwrap, pretty basic. In my workflow, I like to move finished UV islands to the side of the viewport so they do not get in the way when I'm unwrapping new islands. So for these objects, I'm just going to select the faces on the edge and press U and mark seam. When you select a face and mark seam, it's going to mark all the edges that are around the face and that saves me a bit of time. Also, I'm going to disable the little arrows here, select the island with L and press Ctrl E and with my UV squares add-on it's gonna straighten out the UVs which makes them a bit more pleasant to work with. Here again I move the finished islands to the side, select and hide them and I have a clear view of what I gotta work on next. Selecting the mesh that's up next with L and pressing Shift H to hide everything around it I'm selecting the sharp edges again and pressing U and mark seam. So here I'm gonna mark the seam of the back of this object. And with the back of the object being unwrapped and square, I'm gonna move it out the way and hide it again and move on to the next part. Here I see that there's some edges that are unnecessary, so I just select them with Alt and press Ctrl X, which is a shortcut for dissolve edges. Now with the edge that's left over, I mark seam, unwrap it so I have two different islands and then I can select the single island with L and hide everything around it, so I can work on this island alone. So here you can see that there's still a bit of stretching going on, especially at the top. So I'm going to select with L the island and work on it a bit more. Here's one sharp edge that needs to be selected. And here I'm going to make a small mistake, which is selecting this edge in the middle which when I mark seam and unwrap it, it will remove the stretching mostly, so it will look pretty good from the stretching wise, but we have this ugly seam in the middle and the UV islands also look bad. So I'm gonna select these edges instead. Now I'm gonna have a bit more stretching in the mesh, but less seams. Depending on the result that you want to achieve, sometimes more stretching is better, sometimes more seams is better. Here I decided for a bit less seams. 
So from now on, the process is just going to repeat itself. I'm going to be selecting objects, marking seams, moving the islands out the way and hiding them. Here I'm going to leave you with a time lapse of me unwrapping the mesh and I'll be back for exporting and painting in Substance Painter. Here we have the final unwrapped mesh. You can see the UV map, how I've arranged the islands. And for the next step, you're gonna make sure that the object is all zeroed out. If it isn't, you can just press Ctrl A and zero out any of those stats. So with the mesh selected, you're gonna go to export FBX Make sure selected object only is ticked and after you name your mesh you just export it and pull it into Substance Painter. The first thing you always want to do in Substance Painter is bake out the mesh. I baked it as a 2x2k texture and now I'm going to be adding the base colors and masking out the areas where I want them to be in. One thing that I always do is I put the base colors into their own folders which is very helpful in later steps of texturing so I would advise you to do the same. And I like to put ambient occlusion on pretty early to get a feel for how the mesh is looking. Alright, so here I'm going to use the stencil that I created in Photoshop before. You can download it in the description down below. And I'm just going to use the projection tool in Substance Painter. 
and project a bit of base color on this mesh. Now I'm going to add a second paint layer, which is going to be height information. So I'm going to have my projection folder and two fill layers inside of it, one with height information and the other fill layer with color information. Now for these stencils, it's pretty good to just experiment around with them, try out different positions, different colors. And that's what I'm trying to do here, get a good feel of where the different logos and stencils are supposed to be. Now I'm going to use the height um, layer to paint a bit of height information on my mesh. Here as well you can see a bit of trial and error. Make sure it's all masked out correctly and here I'm going to turn down the strength of the height a bit, which as you will see in a second here makes a huge difference. Next up is the glass. So I didn't want to work with real opacity and real see-throughness, so I'm going to fake the glass here. Um, the way I'm going to do that is by putting metallic really high and roughness really low and then I'm going to add two layers above that with metallic but just a different roughness value, put masks on them, add grunge layers, paint a bit down the middle and lower the opacity of the paint layer and that gives us the bit of foggy mirror window look that I'm trying to achieve here without actually making use of the opacity map. Now I'm going to add different types of metals into the base metal folder and on the paint layers of the metal itself I'm going to add black masks and grunge maps on the black masks. Same now for the base red and that is the advantage of having folders for your base colors. You can have different masks and grunge maps on the individual paint layers and when they're all in the same folder, they all follow the mask that the folder has itself. Now I'm just adding different type of grunges and dirts to make my mesh look a bit more believable, a bit more dirty. And after I'm happy with the dirt in the red base folder, I'm going to do the same in the white base folder. Adjust the ambient occlusion a bit. And here I decided to add one more stencil. I didn't quite like the look of it in front. I think on the side it's pretty good. And now lastly, I'm going to hand paint a bit of dirt on the edges and general areas where the dirt would collect on this object. Generators are amazing for creating dirt on the object, but I find that a bit of hand painting is necessary to make the object look realistic. Here again, I'm going to use the generator and then hand remove some of the rust because it is just way too much that's being added from the generator. Now lastly, I'm gonna go into the stencil folder and add damage to the writing that's on the machine itself. Since if the machine was dirty and scratched up, the paint would not stay perfect. Here a nice thing I like to do is add a gradient on the bottom just makes it look a bit nicer and rounder. 
Now you want to export the textures, pick a path and export them all out. And we have arrived at the final part of this tutorial, which is going to be setting this mesh up in Blender, pulling all the different texture maps in. Oops, that's the wrong one right there. So I'm going to pull all the texture maps in and connect them in. And this is where the magic happens. You get to see your object and if it really works outside of Substance Painter. So one thing you want to do is make sure that roughness, metallic and the normal map are on non-color only except um, instead of sRGB. I like to use a mix node and put it on multiply for the ambient occlusion and color. And the next step is to set up the lighting. I personally find that a spotlight aimed at the object with a bit increased radius usually looks very aesthetically pleasing. Now I'm going to add two point lights on where the shadows are being cast, make them high radius and weaken them a bit, just enough so the shadows are not fully black. Now using project camera from view I'm going to set up the shot and after tweaking the render settings a bit I realized that the texture maps were not quite there where I wanted them. So I changed the normal strength a bit and usually the roughness map looks a bit different in Substance Painter than in Blender so I just added the color ramp and played around with it until I got the desired roughness strength. So checking it out one last time in the render option I'm gonna press F12 and get my final render. So this is it for the tutorial. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and comment. And if you really want to support me, check out my art station, where you can see my full portfolio of work and where you can download the stencil that I used to create this asset.